Thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. Lawmakers at the Nigerian Senate have approved the appointment of Godwin Emefile as governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria for the next five years. The senators also passed the Public Holiday Amendment Act for 2019, declaring June 12 Democracy Day in Nigeria. The approval of the Public Holiday Act is in consensus with the House of Representatives, which approved the new date earlier in December 2018. Sunji Oye now reports. Nigeria is positioned as a country whose population will grow and rise to over 425 million people by the year 2015. That will present Nigeria as a country with the third largest population in the world after China and India and indeed surpassing the United States of America in population. Godwin Emefiele is to be in charge of Nigeria Central Bank for another five years. The Stanford and Harvard University trained financial expert was confirmed by the Senate after a thorough screening by the Committee on Banking and Financial Institution. Will the Senate confirm the renewal of the nomination of Godwin Emefiele for the appointment as Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. Yes, I have it. The renewal of the appointment of Godwin I. Mefele is hereby confirmed as the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. On behalf of the Senate, let me congratulate the, the governor of the Central Bank, Mr. Godwin Mefele, on the renewal of his appointment. We wish him a useful t uh, five years and we'll use the opportunity to continue to provide support and ensure that the economy of our country continues to improve and address the most important area of ensuring the micro stability. Six bills were also passed for concurrence on Thursday, top of which was the Public Holiday Act Amendment Bill 2019, which now gives a legal backing for June 12 to be known as Nigeria's Democracy Day. The bill for an act to amend the Public Holidays Act, Cap P40, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004 to bring the act in tandem with the current realities and exigencies of the modern times and to declare June 12 as Democracy Day in Nigeria for related matters 2019 is already third time and passed. The Good Samaritan Bill was also passed which protects anyone who renders reasonable assistance during emergency situation in places within federal jurisdiction. The bill for example absolves anyone who helps accident victims on the highway to the nearest hospital without being asked for police report or any other report, while the hospital is also mandated to commence treatment without waiting for any report. The hallmark of this bill is to save life first. Other bills passed are the Data Protection Bill 2019, the FCT Area Council Service Commission Bill 2019, the Nigerian Natural Medicine Development Agency Bill 2019, and the Project Development Agency Enogun Bill 2019. Legislative activities for the day ended with a communication from President Muhammad Buhari to the Senate with holding assent on the Nigerian Institute of Public Administration Bill 2019. From Abuja, Sunjoye, TV360 News. Just days after the Bayelsa State Government called for the postponement of the November 2nd governorship polls, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has now rescheduled the election. The upcoming governorship elections in Kogi and Bayelsa State will now hold on November 16, 2019. In a statement, INEC's Chairman of Information and Voter Education Committee, Festo Sokoye, explained that the decision was taken following several appeals by critical stakeholders in Bayelsa State. He also states that INEC has the constitutional right to hold governorship polls not earlier than 150 days and not later than 30 days before the expiration of the term of office of the last holder. The tenors of the current Kogi and Bayelsa state governors will expire on January 26 and February, 16, th February 13, respectively. 
The federal government is accusing the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its presidential candidate, Atiku Obubakar, of trying to sabotage President Mohamed Buhari's administration. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, made the allegations while addressing State House correspondents after the Federal Executive Council meeting. He said the opposition party has been instigating violence to discredit the Buhari-led administration. PDP's brand um, of opposition, which we believe poses very serious threat to our democracy. The federal government has very strongly decried the increasingly unpatriotic and desperate opposition politics being played by the PDP and its uh, presidential candidate, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, warning that such dead-end opposition politics could be toxic for the nation's democracy if left unchecked. Never in the history of our politics as an opposition party and as presidential candidate exhibited the kind of desperate tactics being deployed by the duo of the PDP and its flag bearers, especially since President Mohamed Buhari overwhelmingly defeated Atiku to win the 2019 presidential elections. Gone men have killed seven people in two separate attacks in Wakari and Dongo local government areas of Taraba State. The attacks carried out on Wednesday has been confirmed by the spokesperson of the State Police Command, David Misal. He, however, gave assurance that the police command was on top of the situation and has begun a manhunt of those who committed the crime. Ms. Al added that they were working in collaboration with other security agencies and would not rest until all perpetrators were arrested and brought to book. The Customs Service is urging Nigerians to stop buying foreign rice. Comptroller General of the Service, Hamid Ali, made the call in Abuja at a news conference. He says that foreign rice is dangerous to health and has uh, stopped and that the customs has stopped issuing license for the importation of foreign rice. He says that any foreign rice that makes its way into the Nigerian market is smuggled and must be avoided. We are making sure that the rice that comes into this country is radically processed. And I must say that I think in the minister of Bermia, we have not issued a license for importation of rice. So any rice you see on the street that is not produced in Nigeria, it's small. It's small. And it will be interesting with the, with the assistance of our people. Because if we stop buying this rice, suddenly they, they will go out of business. And there will be no need to bring in this rice. So, I, I appeal to Nigeria that imported rice is poisonous. One is that there's no rice, imported rice that comes into this country that has not spent minimum of five years in silos. Two is that a chemical must have been added to it to sustain its own freshness, and that chemical is out. Thirdly, when you see the bag, the truth that is, has been revived and then a new date is given is false. It's false. They do that in the Republic, they do that on high sea. They change the bag and then give it a new date. And that's what we consume here. And when you end up with colon cancer, you begin to wonder how does it happen. These are the causes of, 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 of your disease. So may I appeal to Nigerians, please patronize our own indigenous life. It's available, it's more nutritious. And uh, if you do that, you will, you will uh, assist customs by making sure that these people are put out of business. AKT State Governor Kayode Fayemi has nullified all employments made by the administration of former Governor Ayodele Fayeshe 
from July 2019. The State Commissioner for Information, Muyiwa Olamul, announced this at a press conference in Ado, the Ekiti State Capital. He said the nullified employ appointments were last-minute employments made by the past administration and lacked due process. The government also placed conditions on other employment dated before the election, saying they would be subject to review and availability of vacancy. Lagos State Governor Akimomi Ambodi says his administration has succeeded in transforming the infrastructural landscape of Lagos with massive construction of critical roads and bridges. Governor Ambodi said this while commissioning the Agri Access Road, Egon, and the Lagos Theatre in Igondo, Ikotun Local Council Development Area. LCDA. The governor, who also flagged off the construction of a link bridge connecting Egon and Ayobo communities, said he was fulfilled that his administration has delivered on its promise to run an inclusive government. This theatre is one of the five built under this administration in line with our project Tourism, Hospitality, Entertainment and Arts, Sports for Excellence, Project Peace. This project seeks to engage our active and creative youth, create employment around the entertainment, arts and culture sector, and thereby boost the state's economy. The other theaters that have been completed, four have been completed thus far. They're in Balagri, Ekwe, Ikeja, and then this one in Nogodo, and then Korodu is to take off, to make it in five divisions. But we're very optimistic and the positive benefits of these theatres across the state will be huge as it will create opportunities for many of our unemployed youth to express themselves and bring about their own creativity. The Lagos State University has rolled out 57 first-class graduates at its second convocation ceremony. Vice Chancellor of the Institute, Professor Olariwaju Fagbonhon, who announced this, said it was a landmark achievement in the history of the college to have 57 first class graduates in one session. Given a breakdown of the graduates, Fagbonhon stated that 19% of them were from the Faculty of Science, uh, 10 from the Faculty of Education, 2 from the Faculty of Engineering, 13 from the Faculty of Management Sciences, and 19 from the Faculty of Science, among others. He also noted that two students, Olag Badamosi Ridwan from Faculty of Mechanical Engineering and Enuma Neka Karen from Faculty of Science, had the highest GPA of 4.88. Success does not come with ease. It requires a sacrifice. And it is your ability to pay that sacrifice that paves way for you. As a student, there are other services you can render when you get into the university system. So, if you put in hard work and you don't sit down at your comfort zone, reaching out to some few organizations, if they see the, the desire for you to excel, they are going to help you financially. The challenge is, well, being in the Faculty of Sciences, it's not an easy thing. Uh, you have to study, you have to really study, because the, the lecturers will actually tax you. They, they set limits, so that even when you look at them, you feel that the limits are not uh, attainable. But if you put in the work, and also I had the uh, uh, challenge of finance. I come from a hum humble background, so it wasn't easy actually. Studying actually takes everyone away. When people actually re recognize that what you are here for is one thing and only one thing, it actually, in quotes, scares them away. So I think that was able to handle a bit of that. The Nigerian Society of Engineers, Ikeja branch, is working to improve the interest of youth in technology and engineering. To achieve this, the body last year began the Adiremi uh, Amoson Project Skill Competition for secondary school students. The project, which is at its second edition, is aimed at exploring and encouraging the spirit of engineering and technology among students. Speaking to TV360 Nigeria, organizers of the event uh, highlighted the importance of the program for youth. There is a major problem in the country today, the, the problem of manpower for the technical community. And this is the best way to start, to ensure that we catch them young, we spark the spirit of 
technology and engineering in these children at a tender age so that we can boost the manpower of the country in terms of the engineering development of the country. These are the kind of programs that will inspire the youth. They can actually understand what it means to be an engineer. And when you come here, they've actually used their hands, they've created things, and they've understood the theme very well because it's about environmental awareness. And so we've seen some very, very beautiful creations from here. And I hope that the children go on to have very successful careers in engineering. We want to develop the young minds that will be coming up. This challenge does not end here. Having won the award here today, some of them will be going on with scholarships for them uh, to go through universities if they actually study engineering. Because we want to ensure that problems are being solved in the environment. I've also brought in investors today to look at what they have done to see if we can commercialize some of these things and bring them up to things that we can use in solving problems in Nigeria. We can't continue to rely on China and other countries for some, some of the things that we use in this country. We need to be able to rely upon ourselves and we need to be able to make a difference in our generation. You're still watching news now on TV360 Nigeria. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. Let's now talk business with Oin Adekunwe. Hello, Oin. Hi, Aneta. Please bring us up to speed with the latest in business today. Yes, Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, says the country is making remarkable progress to attain, to attain greater economic stability. Speaking at a news conference in Abuja, Zainab said the ministry has intensified efforts to shore up the nation's revenue base stressing that revenue generation and implementation of the strategic revenue initiative is one key area calling for recognition. While she commends the revenue performance for 2018, which stands at 3.98 trillion naira over the performance of 2017, she says it is a way off the budgeted target of 7.16 trillion naira. We have not only continued but redoubled our efforts to ensure that the economy stays on a path that is sustainable in growth. And while we are making strategic investments in critical infrastructure, in human infrastructure, to spur to in, in human capital, uh, I beg your pardon, to spur further economic growth. Our plan is to improve the fiscal space by boosting revenues as well as implementing the ongoing uh, work that we're doing on the Strategic Revenue Growth Initiative. The revenue performance continues to sh uh, show improvements with revenues amounting to 3.98 uh, trillion at the end of the, at the, end of, uh, the year 2018. This represents a 31 percent increase over the performance in 2017. However, this performance of 3.96 trillion still falls short of this administration's uh, budgeted target as the aggregate revenue performance is still only 55% of the projected revenue of 7.16 uh, trillion naira. The Ministry of Finance will continue to uh, prioritize revenue generation and the implementation of the Strategic Revenue Growth Initiative. The approval of a $1 billion loan from the Chinese Exim Bank to construct the Gurara 2 hydro project, hydro power project, is one of the many key decisions 
taken by the Federal Executive Council. The approval was given during the Council's weekly meeting held in Abuja, the nation's capital. Fidelia Algoncha tells us more. Call it the last supper if you wish. This Federal Executive Council meeting will be the last for the consideration and approval of projects for execution by the current Federal Cabinet. Over 20 memos have been lined up for consideration with infrastructure development topping the agenda. After more than 12 hours of deliberation, then comes the time to brief journalists on some decisions taken by the cancer. The first memo had to do with the need to exploit the potentials of uh, the Gurara 2 hydropower project, which has a potential of 360 megawatts of electricity. Council approved for us to uh, take this project uh, to FOCAC for possible financing by the China Exim Bank at the cost of about a billion dollars. Uh, that was approved. The second memo was for the need to complete uh, in Kari Dam in Akwa Ibom State. Uh, we sought approval for a revised estimated total cost of the project, and this was approved by about 5.7 billion naira. Two medals presented by the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing also get the approval of the council. The construction of uh, an interchange and pedestrian bridge at Abaji uh, in uh, Abuja for 7.197 billion to address the perennial problem of accidents in that place, uh, which was approved for the sum of 7.197 billion. The second memorandum was for the procurement of uh, 200,217 meters by Yola Electricity Distribution Company from Zik Laxis under the meter asset provider scheme. Next to brief journalist is the Minister of Agriculture, Aldu Ogwe, who makes some interesting uh, revelation about the results of the government's ban on maize importation. The policy of this government is let's use what we produce and save our foreign exchange, which is why in the last three and a half years we have saved $21 billion on imports. We are insisting that whatever we can do here, we do what we cannot do, we, we import. The next meeting of the Federal Executive Council will come up on May 22nd and it will be a valedictory ceremony for its members. After that, the cabinet will be dissolved. President Muhammad Buhari will be sworn in for a second term in office on May 29 and he would have to either retain or appoint new members to head different government ministries, departments and agencies. Fidelia Agoncha, TV360, Nigeria. The House of Representatives have passed a bill seeking to prohibit age discrimination against job seekers in federal government agencies. According to the sponsor and chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Rules and Business, Edward Pwajok, the bill seeks to ensure that no citizen is deprived of employment on the basis of age. The lawmaker decried the situation where competent young men and women have been unable to get a job just because they graduated from university at the age of 25. He, however, states that the bill exempts security agencies, including the Nigerian Armed Forces and other paramilitary agencies, where there may be requirements for some rigorous physical exercises. Stock Market Review is up next right after this break. Please stay tuned. To begin the stock market review today, we'll have you know that MTN has officially begun trade on the Nigerian stock market. The South African telecommunications brand listed over 20 billion shares on the Nigerian stock exchange and opened trade at 1.45 p.m. today, currently selling at 99 naira per share. So far, Bagain Hunters have bought 5,541 shares, coming in at a value of 548 
1.598 million naira in a total of 15 deals. And true to the forecast of analysts that MTN's listing on the stock exchange may help boost activities for the Nigerian capital market, the bulls are back and they've resurfaced on the market floor, pulling the plug on the eight-day reign of the bears. The all share index was pushed up to 0.54%, and it gets more interesting when we try to compare the market capitalization today to that of previous session. From 10.822 trillion naira yesterday, which represented the lowest in four years, market cap is now up to 12.525 trillion naira. Also, interestingly, analysts said the equities market, which was on a downward trend in the early hour of the day, plunged after the news of MFLA's reappointment as CBN governor was announced. Good for the market, as we saw that at the end of trading, over 310 million shares valued at 2.811 billion naira uh, were traded in 3,933 deals. Let's now look at the best performing stocks for today. We have Unilever leading the pack, um, followed by NPF Microfinance Bank PLC, Union Bank Nigeria PLC, and of course, and the Nigerian Aviation Handling Company PLC also chalked up gains equivalent to one point. Six zero percent. Now to the stocks who are not partaking in the joy ride on the market today. We see Nigerian breweries followed by Dangote Cement again with a 1.12% drop. Guinness and Guarantee Trust Bank is also on the chart. Now to global markets, we see that global markets remained positive except for Nikkei. FTSE joined other European benchmarks to close up midweek as trade, um, the trade war fears begin to ease. Dow also edged higher. We see 0.92%, but sadly the Nikkei share average ended down 0.59% after banks tumbled on weak earnings reports. That's all on the stock market review today. It's back to you, Aneta. Thank you very much for that, Oni. Quite a very interesting day on the stock markets globally and locally here Indeed. in Nigeria. I think what's more interesting for me is MTN's listing on the NSC. I mean, today is their first official day of trade. And I mean, they've sold over 5 million worth of shares and made uh, over 500 uh, million naira as well. Let's see if in the long run they'll be able to sustain the market. And the bulls, the, the bulls will replicate what the bears have been doing in the past few days keeping them in the red. So. Indeed, and I will be looking forward to it, and I'm sure the viewers as well will be keeping their fingers crossed. The United States Department of Transportation has suspended all commercial passenger and cargo flights between the United States and Venezuela. This was due to the reports of unrest and violence around the airport in the South American country. Some international airlines had stopped flying to Venezuela because of security concerns. They also accused the government of owing them money. In a letter to the Transportation Department requesting the halt, the Department of Homeland Security said conditions in Venezuela threaten the safety and security of passengers, aircraft and crew traveling to and from that country. Venezuela has been in crisis following an uprising by the country's opposition leader, Juan Guaido, to oust the Nicolas Maduro-led administration. And in sports, former Super Eagles head coach Christian Chuku has arrived in London, England for medical treatment. Chuku, who captained the Den Green Eagles of Nigeria to win the Africa Cup of Nations for the first time in 1980, arrives to the United Kingdom accompanied by his wife. At the outbreak of the news of the health challenges of the former defender, the NFF had immediately moved to ascertain the nature of his illness and provide support. Between 2002 and 2005, Chuku was head coach of the Super Eagles, leading the team to win bronze medal at the 2004 Africa Cup of Nations in Tunisia. Thanks so much for watching. Catch up on other interesting programs on our website at www.tv360nigeria.com. I am Aneta Felix. Bye for now. Thank you.